the man who plays Ted Lasso, co-creator, co-writer, actor of the Emmy Award-winning Ted Lasso. Great to see you, Jason Sudeikis. How are you, brother? Thank you very much, Rich Heisen. Did you see Sean Payton hand out biscuits in his farewell press conference as the coach of the New Orleans Saints? Did you Did you not? I don't know if I did. I, I mean, he I did I, that. He literally hand he, he, he to the press. Yes. Oh, that's great. And he mentioned your show. Oh, and, that's lovely. Yeah. No, the yeah. I mean, it's crazy that, that we forget sometimes that folks actually watch the show. That was an, you know a thing I felt when I worked at SNL too. You just feel like okay, we're just we're putting on this little pageant right. for three hundred people and for each other each week, and then Sundays people would be like, hey, great show last night. Oh my gosh. So the fact that you know people at all ends of the spectrum, you know, uh, you know, have watched the show and and and, and reference it. You know, I, I I can't catch them all, um, but I'm surprised that one. He didn't. did that. Yeah. yeah as I a matter of fact, so we we act we have behind up there. We have a believe sign. If you see it yes, right up there, yep. we had Sean Payton sign that when there he was go. here, and Coach Beard signed it. Brendan Hunt when he was here on studio That's a few great. weeks ago. That's great. If you, yeah, if you got 15 bucks, I'll sign it for you. you. Go, oh <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can you know? we, would you guys yeah. take up a collection I, oh, Rich, for Jason a big cash guy. later yeah. on? And I don't have change, so Rich, if, it's, if you happen to have a 20, yeah. that's kind of why I'd make it 15, because no one carries 15. Yeah, 10 and a 5 or 10, 5. Yeah, these are things, well done. These are things you, Very you figure well done. out. You keep yeah. changing. There's on no you. business you know, like it's, show business. It, it was funny. It, it was about four, maybe five years ago. Yep. One of the many times you were kind enough to be on this show, we had you. You were on the phone, mm -hmm. and you were just talking about this character, Ted Lasso. Sure. And, you know, it's an NBC sports concept that uh, for for promo, mm -hmm. and you, you make a TV show out of it. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Any idea at all? This is what it would possibly be in the realm of becoming Ted Lasso. At Not all at Jason. all. Not in wildest dreams. I, but I, I, I've, I've very ignorantly or, or intelligently never worried about the destination, you know, uh, of, of anything that I've been involved in creatively or probably right. even scholastically or romantically. Because <laughs> I think if you, if you know how things are going to end, uh, even if it's something like your wildest dreams, like this, the reaction to this show, I, I don't know if you'd go about it the same way. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I mean, the show is is everything that I would hope it would be, and 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 the caliber of people we have working behind the camera and in front of the camera and in every every realm has been absolutely uh, something that I would have been able to manifest or at least imagine for right. the reaction to it. No way, Jose. For it to be born out of again, just uh, when was the first time you put on the lasso gear? Like when was oh, the, when did that happen? That would have been August twenty thirteen. Yeah. Damn. No, it, like the, the we did Brendan and Joe and I did those commercials. Uh, yeah. No, 2013 yeah and by my math otis was also my, my son my um uh was conceived that same week so that was that was a heck of a week <laughs> that was, i was in a real creative space and i and I, and and look to my credit i was smart yes. enough to be around uh make yes. both these things with incredible people <laughs> you know like you know what i mean just good sure. just good just good folks so you know uh you know shout out to you know brendan joe and olivia so i uh, wouldn't have ted lasso or otis sudeikis without it big yep. week for big you week. big week and yeah. the sudeikis family and so from both heads for, for <laughs> can i say that that's fine. Uh, yeah, I think that's passable. I think that's, yeah, I think right? that's good. Yeah. And very creative, I might like say. You. Well, it's just, I, I, just I, anatomy. A, a plus. I don't know. Again, I would argue. I'd argue it's right maybe up there with, you know, your oh, fart scent, but all right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a beautiful show, man. Thank you. It is just beautiful. The number of times where my wife and I, when the credits roll, mm. and we look at each other and go, that was incredible. Wow. Just, it really is beautiful with a huge heart. How do you remain consistent on that front I, for you I, and the crew together I, like I th that? I think we try to come from that space every time, you know, anytime and every right. time. Like, it, yeah. it's it's... You know, from the get go, that's that's always been what it was. Not not the commercial necessarily, but certainly by the second commercial, I think that's where it always came from. Was like this space of, of G whiz, mm -hmm. you, you know. And I, I yeah, it, it, it's, it's. I don't think we're inventing anything, and I'm not saying anybody's accusing us or or, or endowing us with that. But right. but we are we are just sort of going back to this this place again of what would be, the best would be the choice here. What is the, you know, cause I understand and have always appreciated and always responded to the wish fulfillment of getting back at people, you know, of, of retribution of, of, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the, the good guys losing at the, at the, at the, at, or, the, um, or the bad guys losing, excuse me, at the good guys, yes. you know, sword or lightsaber, or, you know, wit. Um, but it's also just kind of interesting to see like, if you don't have that opportunity to do that, if you don't have a cape, if you don't have, you know, 
good, you know, writers <laughs> right there offset in the real life right. that may be following your heart and, you know, trying to see the best of a situation, even if it's not the way, the outcome that you want, uh, there might be, there might be strength in that too, you know, heroics in that. Uh, but, you know, so we're just sort of messing around with that. We talked to Brendan Hunt the other day, who plays Coach Beard, about casting Brett Goldstein mm -hmm. as Roy Kent. Yeah. How did you, uh, you know, land on Hannah Waddingham as the coach, as he, the as the uh, the owner of the team? Where did you, when did you yeah. cast her or find? Well, I mean, that's one of those beautiful things that the universe was just kind of looking out for this show and continues to on a, on, on a you know, minute by minute basis. We had, we had. You know, a couple of people in mind, like, you know, Big Fish, you know, and, and to have someone like Apple, because they, they have, they don't, they're not just in the TV show business. They, yes. have, they have a whole side gig that, yes. that does considerably yeah, I've, well. I've got a phone right yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's one instance, of them. Yeah, this computer. That, they own parking lots here in, in LA. Yeah, that's they a do lot. very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, they'd be willing to, if we were, if we could get a big fish, you yeah. know, uh, on the line to, to probably, you know, pay them enough and make things interesting enough for them. Uh, unfortunately, um, no one cared about us or knew what we were doing. And a lot of folks were also already busy. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't get one of those quote unquote big fish. Um, and then we, then we opened it up to auditions. Um, and we only went to like two or three people for the, for those offers yes. uh, initially. And then, then we had, you know, anywhere between, you know, 10 to, to uh, 20 women, you know, audition. And, and there was some that were just absolutely fantastic. And Brennan and I went to go do uh, chemistry reads w uh, with them in, in London mm -hmm. and uh, came back, you know, pretty confident in, in, in some people. And then, and then our writer's room uh, was filled with our producers as well, um, you know, didn't respond in the same way realm because sometimes when you're in the in the room with someone yeah. it's a different energy than when you're watching them you know on television and the way things come across and just kind of with Brendan and I's background of improvisation you kind of like are just in a very supportive mood when you're in the room and on stage with someone in a scene with someone so then it was it was like a a, a nice little dish of humble pie uh not that we were arrogant about who we thought you know our, our top three choices but then nobody really responded so then our friend uh a dear friend that you mentioned earlier Brendan was was chatting about something totally different to uh, the, uh, this fellow of our uh, that we know, a buddy of ours named Todd Stashwick, mm -hmm. who also did Second City back in the day. But I forget how he, he and Brendan knew each other. They're talking about something else. How are things going? Oh, doing the show, trying to find the part for this you know, for this character. Oh, what's she like? Uh, Brendan gives like a two line description, and he just goes, "Hannah Waddingham." Excuse me, Hannah Waddingham. Like, right? What What is that? He goes, "That's that's who you want to play this part," and and it was kind of like, okay. So then we, you know, look it up, you know, and, and her name's as, as tricky to spell as, as my last name. So, you know, we're diligent about that and, and uh, looked her up and was like, wow, you know, I mean, she definitely looks the part. She doesn't when she was the shame, you know, gal. Exactly. And like, like, by the way, when, when this show yeah. hit and it's just like, wait a minute, she was the, the shame nun yeah. from Game of Thrones. I know, yeah. Spectre. You know, in that, you know, in that get up, you yeah. know, like, you know, not a drip of makeup or at least anything that was there was done to probably knock down, you know, right. uh, you know, her natural uh, charms. And we, uh, and so then we, we, she auditioned, then, I mean, I can't remember how quick it was after that, but her, she's now in LA, you know, jet lagged as hell doing a, we do, we do a chemistry read, like where we read, just like we had done with the, the, the women, uh, in London. And it was just evident to me, I mean, the sort of the second I saw her, I mean, I've said this before in the press, like it was like sort of seeing something that was only in my head in, in real life, right. you know, like in your meeting and shaking hands, just being like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And then our conversations b uh, before the audition, d during the audition, like during giving like little feedback, mm -hmm. and then post audition, only you know cemented that notion. And then it went up the chains at at, at Apple, went up the chains at Warner Brothers. A fellow named Peter Roth, who was in in uh, in charge of you know Warner Brothers Television at that time, was yeah. was a hunt was like. I love her, you know, like 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 a guy that had, had done so many shows just immediately snapped to her, and that I know that really really helped. But for me, it was it was. It was right from there. It was just off we went. It's like, okay, great, Rebecca, done. She's fantastic. She really is. I mean, and she's always been fantastic. And it, you know, it's one of those those neat things where sometimes the right thing shows up at the right time, and you're mm -hmm. ready for it, and they're ready for you, and off we went. Yeah, so far so good. Jason Sudeik is here on the Rich Eisen Show again. Ted Lasso season three is up and running right now. Every single week, uh, you can watch it right here on Roku through Apple TV Plus here on the Rich Eisen Show. We have a, a, a segment called Celebrity True or False, if you right. wouldn't mind playing this. This True. is about your film and TVography and things of that nature that's out there on the internet. We need to know if it's true or false. I got it. Yeah, I can help it. We even have terrific production value. Hit it, please. Can't wait to see this. There we go. Well, look at that. Celebrity True or False. You can't handle the truth. There you go. Yeah. Somewhat timely with Jack Nicholson back at uh, Lakers games right yes, now. Yes, okay. indeed. Uh, true or false, Jason Sudeikis, you once auditioned for a role in the Blue Man Group. Is that true, true or false? True. Very true. 
when, when and times. where, what do you got for I me? I was living in Las Vegas, and I was doing Second City at the Flamingo there, and uh, there, there were a couple different shows at that time that were non, like, you know, Topless Showgirls or yes. Magic or Cirque du Soleil. Uh, well, Cirque du Soleil, uh, there was, it was us, uh, a show called De La Guarda, and then Blue Man Group. And I had always loved the drums. I first moved to Chicago. It was the, one of the first auditions I went to. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not a good enough drummer. Like, I can kind of, you know, fake it on a drum kit. But those, you have to have, like, actual, like, you know, like, rudiments, like, like yes. drumline-type chops. Uh -huh. And uh, I became friends with, with a few of the Blue Men. We all did. You know, they were, we'd set up Second City there. They'd taken classes. So so then I just started going to the show, and I just fell in love with it. I, I, I loved the the philosophy behind it. I loved uh, the way they're, 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 they were running the business of their show and it was like it probably felt like subconsciously the only way I'd ever have the chance to live out like you know a rock and roll dream even if it was going to be bald blue anonymous and silent <laughs> like if that's if, if that's what it takes to do it and I auditioned like I remember August of 2001 right before uh, September 11th and I was in New York and it was supposed to be it was a process that was either going to take three days five days or two weeks three days you know there's a there's a cutoff for like saying thank you for coming uh, but we you know yeah. we no longer uh, you know, your time with us has ended. Um, I got past the three days, um, and then the f day five is when I got booted. I got to see myself bald and blue. I was about to ask, how long does it take to put the uh, the paint on? Golly, Jason, that's I can't a process. I remember at this point. It was a while ago, but but certainly longer than it takes to get dressed up as Joe Biden on <laughs> SNL. But that, that's also because those 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 people at SNL are like, yes. you know, you know, Wizzos and like a NASCAR pit crew mm -hmm. that they try they'd make you, you know, turn you into someone like, you know, the president in a commercial break. But but yeah, it was it was it was a lot. And and I did find similar to, you know, Tobias Funk on, on Arrested Development. Yes. I did find a lot of blue in, in weird places <laughs> for like, you know, at least a week after that. My friends in the show would find blue like they would come out in their eyes. You know, their eye boogers would be blue. I, 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 I want to check in on all of them probably in about seven more years here to <laughs> make sure that that cobalt blue, you know, was 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 safe. Because uh, we'll, we'll have a better idea about that. When soon you enough. met the real Biden recently, yeah. did he bring up your imitation? Yes, he. I just he hates it. No, no, he. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. He's. I mean, he's lovely about it. We had met once before when oh, I played okay. him as the vice president, uh, right. not not at the White House by any means, but. And he was always he was always nice about it. My dad met him uh, during uh, stump speech in two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was in where was he? Maybe in. It's somewhere in Kansas City, like maybe right. like Lee's Summit or something like that. Yeah. And and uh, my dad afterwards stayed around to you know to shake hands and say hello. And he's like, yeah, you know, my my son uh, is Jason today because he pr he plays you on Saturday Night Live. Uh, and uh, he goes, well, you know, uh, he was like, how, how about that? Let's get a picture. You know, <laughs> like, you okay. know, yeah, sure. My dad had a flip phone at that point. Nice. Uh, you know, because I didn't want to like you know you know, just buy him everything he wanted right off the bat. Sure. Once I got a big fancy TV job, I had to like dole it out. Well, I mean, but, Apple, I'm sure he now has a, an upgrade of some sort. No, no, you keep him, keep him hungry, keep him humble. You know? yeah. <laughs> Even in retirement. No, 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 no. He does have an iPhone. He has an iPhone, okay, okay. Bluetooth, right to some, some, you know, uh, hearing aids. Okay. It's yeah. When okay. we can't hear the TV, we know dad is hearing it better than any of us. <laughs> yep. Jason Sudeik, it's celebrity, true or false. Next one for you. Your initial audition at SNL was interrupted by Chris Rock, who bar oh, barged into the studio, did a 10-minute stand-up set in front of the NBC executives and essentially stole your thunder. Ah, not quite. Not okay. 100%. Uh, we, we were, the first time um, did I auditioned for SNL was at a place called Stand Up New York mm -hmm. on the Upper West Side, a stand-up club. Yes. And, you know, knowing what I know now about I'd say 50% of the audience was folks that worked at SNL, but behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. The rest were just regular folks coming to see, uh, you know, a stand-up uh, show, you know, an evening of stand-up. And then the back wall, there was, a, you know, Tina Fey and Lauren Michaels and Steve Higgins and Mike Shoemaker. You know, uh, you know, Tina, I, I, I knew. Lauren, I knew what he looked like. You know, Steve yes. and, and Mike, who were producers uh, of the show, um, you know, didn't know. But then, but then it's 12 of us. I'm slotted like seven right before going up. Yes. Uh, I'm outside chatting. That's where Rob Riggle and I met. Rob Riggle from, you know, the yes. big, as you know, at the Big, big Slick. Slick. Also, yep. you know, grew up, we grew up five minutes away from each other. Had never met. I'd ne never heard of his name, even Get though we, we are here. never. He went to show me in South. I grew up in South District. So, like, that's really one of the most important things for me that came out of that opportunity to audition for the show. I mean, getting the show, yes, is wonderful, but getting to meet Rob and what a kind guy he is. And just like, he was like, wait, where did you grow? Like, were you talking about Kansas City? Yeah. Are you from Kansas City? Yeah. So are you. Where? Overland Park. 
where? We got down to like cross streets, like 98th <laughs> and Lowell. GTS He's there? like, I'm 95th and Lowell. I forget exactly where he grew up, but, and, and yeah, so, so we have that. So then here you go. You got these two Kansas boys, you know, getting to do this thing, taking this very different routes. You know, I went yes. through college basketball. He was in the Marines, you know, very different. Blue man group. Exactly. The Marines. Group. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we both did blue man group. No, but, um, so then, uh, I'm about to go up and sure enough about one, while the person up before me comes, is up on stage, uh, I, in walks Chris and, and Jeffrey Ross. And I, th I just think, oh, maybe they're coming to see, like, you know, they hear, they know there's auditions and just like the communal, like sort of fraternal element family of, sure. of SNL. Like, oh, they're just coming to see what's what. And, uh, and then lo and behold, I, I, he's talking to the guy who's hosting. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, sure, man. And, <laughs> and I'm standing there off stage, like outside the room, but like, you know, hearing the fellow going before, like doing well and whatnot. And Chris is like standing next to me. And I slowly sniff out like, oh, he's about to go up and perform. Now you hear about, you know, Chappelle dropping in or Jim Carrey dropping in that if Chris Rock wants to go up there and do two hours, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, I'm not right. going to be mad about it. Right. No one in the crowd is going to be mad about it. Yeah. You know, they'll be like, oh, my God, Chris Rock showed up out of nowhere. Um, and he and he, you know, he's ladies and gentlemen, the next performer you, you don't need, needs no introduction. But here it is. Put your hands together for Chris Rock. And he looks at me. And he goes, is this your big shot? I was like, kind of. He goes, sorry, man. <laughs> but he goes out there. But like in a lovely way, like, you know, like as, as a former point guard and athlete, I, li I like, you know, uh, I like a shooting guard's confidence like like right. that, you know, or a wide receiver. And he goes up. Luckily, you know, I mean, luckily. Uh, he only did 10 minutes, you know, he didn't do, you know, the right. whole thing. They were working on jokes for the MTV movie, uh, you know, he was getting ready to host a, a movie awards uh, special and, or on MTV uh, when they, you know, the um, talk, whatever award show thing. Mm -hmm. And he, and then what was lovely is he comes off stage, uh, he looks at me and I was, I was, I was like, uh, you know, um, joking around, you know, I don't know, I've never met him, uh, thanks for setting, thanks for, you know, thanks for setting him up for me, you know, <laughs> he goes, and he goes, hey man, uh, they love original thought. I was like, cool. You know, and he's talking about the show. Right. He's talking about Lauren. They let, ladies and gentlemen, here's your, you know, your next act, Jason Sudeikis. I go up there, Sudeikis. you know, that's, you know, that, you know Sudeikis, however they want to call it. Hey, my name is Jason Sudeikis. Uh, I don't mention Chris or do any jokes, you know, about that because it kind of was just in the room and just, whew, just play off that energy. And right. that was it. So he didn't bar, he didn't barge in to the studio or anything. It, he was very gracious about it. Him, him sharing with me that notion of they love original thought is uh you know nothing that he he, he said that uh before I, I read that like in like the uh live from new york book but the fact that i got it in that moment not that i could adjust anything at that point sure but it has been a a certainly thing that i i've encouraged myself and and people at snl to to follow that advice or at least that notion because it is true so then let's get to how you because you did get a a, a writing gig and then you mm -hmm. be, true or false this is how you became a cast member you co-wrote a sketch behind the music, the Chicago Bears Super Bowl shuffle for the host named Tom Brady. There yep. you are with him up on the screen. Yeah. He played Jim McMahon. You were a backup bear. and I was you, Kevin Butler. You were Kevin Butler? I was Kevin Butler. Okay, you're Kevin character. Butler. Yeah. Pardon me. Yep. That's and, why I'm wearing the hat. If you go to the original, the source material, you'll see that Kevin Butler's wearing <laughs> the white fedora and the shades. You, we're very, I like the source material. Yeah. Very good. And, <laughs> the and, IP. and so your performance as Kevin Butler, which Thank makes you. this even better, yep. is what earned you... A role as a cast member it certainly it certainly it felt like the straw that broke the camel's back not to refer to Lauren as a camel <laughs> uh, or to make him appear feeble in any ways but nice. but it was it was incredibly uh, uh, instrumental in in that decision it had sort of been bandied around uh, uh, about you know I, I had auditioned at that point for the show twice uh, we can update once all these auditions had gone well at this point um, to get to write on that show is a tremendous opportunity um, and it's one that the people that uh, write the show and that pay for the show should pay the writers to do and make a living wage at. That said, getting off my soapbox. Uh, nice. The, um, it is uh, that time. It is that time. That time of season. Um, that, yeah, I, I, I'd I, made a bold move of which I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not, I, I don't, it's not in, in me to try to upstage a situation, um, but it's it just this weird conflation of, of events Beck was the musical guest Beck had a guy next to him when he was doing uh, his stuff just kind of like dancing like hype dancing like just like in, a, in like a flight suit and it really made us laugh and Beck's like just a very funny like you know clever boy who's also a very clever funny you know yes. like creative man and so he just has this guy dancing to him and we were watching it during like you know rehearsals being like like Beck's killing it but this dude is a is a is a piece of work. I love it. And so then it came time for us to rehearse the sketch and the whole like any like you know most sketches you know it has you know 
a bunch of like four, three different, three or four different beats. The first one being the original Super Bowl Shuffle, and then Jim McMahon and the Bears want to do a second version, so they change the lyrics, and then he wants to go solo. So then it's just you know Tom Brady and I uh, on stage, <laughs> and so I'm like, well, I'm gonna I'll dance like to make like the writer friends laugh. I'll, I'll dance and I'll do like this old school hip hop dancing like I, like I used to do on my AAU basketball team, or like or you know just to like make my team my teammates laugh. And it's working. And when you when you look at the like the clip of itself, you have like twenty five to thirty extras, you know. And look, this sketch was written by me and three other Chicago, you know, people that came through Chicago: John Lutz, Rich Tellerico, and Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly, one of the co creators of Ted Lasso. And we, um, and so now you have these thirty dudes because they were all on stage, just off stage, watching this sketch. Like, and they're all we're all around the same age, you know, black dudes, white dudes, you know, like just a, a beautiful Benetton ad uh, of of <laughs> inclusion and humanity. All all male, but but you know they were the bears, the eighty five, eighty six bears, and and so I started doing this dancing, and they're all cracking up, just like back in like when I was fifteen. Like I mean, it felt so familiar to me that I just then was just playing into it and just giving over to it and being a ham, like you know what I mean. And I swear to God, man, I watched our our boss Lauren Michaels come walk in, look at what's going on. Hmm. <laughs> then walk right out. <laughs> now that can mean anything. So, you know, that can mean that, that can mean we need Jason out of here, or that can mean what it ended up mean a couple weeks later, which was you know uh, we'd love to put you in the cast. You know, just write anything you feel like you can score on. Yes, yeah. and that was it. Because I know when he was watching, you know, it happened on a Friday night, and I know the, the conversation was like that should be a, a cast member's part. Like it's become a little bit of a spotlight part. And then Tina, from what I had heard, was Tina was like, okay, well then what cast member are you going to put in there? You know, who's going to get those laughs? And everybody's like, I don't know. You know, do we know anybody that, can, that does that kind of dancing and dances like that? And like, is that goofy and silly? Like, I don't know. He's like, he's already getting these laughs. You could hear it in the in the dress or in the rehearsal. And Lauren's like, yeah, just let him do it. And so then at dress rehearsal on Saturday, the next thing I'm dancing around like that. And he evidently looked at the screen and just goes, mm, Dan Aykroyd, you know, referring to like the way Dan Aykroyd could move as, you know, as, as uh, you know, the Blues Brothers. And, and and like, I think that that just kind of like, Made a, made a switch in his head that, and I'm thankful for <laughs> Joe, Rich, Tom Brady, you know, uh, Lutz, Tina, you know, like, I mean, it, it's just a weird it, thing that, it, that happens. You never know. So you're like one, you're, you're just like 23 years of NFL players. Tom Brady helped lead to a big break for you. Exactly. And, yep. but you're the only individual on planet earth with a subset of Tom Brady and Kevin Butler leading to Yeah, without, break. without Kevin Butler, without, without whoever wrote, the Super Bowl shuffle. That's who we're really. That's, that's who it yes, is. That's who it is. <laughs> that's who it is. Yeah. And then, so just one last thing on that. Yeah. Lorne Michaels really sounds like Doctor Evil. Like he really does. I mean, like that is that is an appropriate. You know. I mean, uh, I, like I, that's, that's what the idea. That's who Mike with, Myers. With was. my understanding of how time works. Yes. Doctor Evil sounds like Lorne Michaels. <laughs> But yes, I love it. There are some similarities there, from what I, I understand. It. I love it. Jason Sudeik is kind enough to stay to the end of the hour here on uh, on this Thursday program. Um, we were just chatting in the commercial break about Peyton Manning because because he 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 has some legit comedy chops. Hundred percent, Peyton Manning. So yeah. is Eli too, by the Absolutely, way. Absolutely, yeah. We, they hosted both when I was there. We had a great. We, we, Eli did a great sketch uh, where he was like on on trial. And I'm just like, I'm just cross-examining him and, and it's just him talking about like sending, you know, like late night booty texts. Uh, and <laughs> and he's just hilarious and he totally got the joke. And we, and we kind of wrote it as like, as like a, out of the concern of like, oh, sometimes, you know, athletes, you know, we, you don't want to give them too much, you know, it lean too much on them. Not the case with the Manning bros. You can, you can, get, you can throw anything at them. Can. Did yep. you have to pitch Brady on the Super Bowl shuffle sketch? Did I you can't pitch? remember. I mean, it might have been. I, I think it was Rich Tellerico's idea. He was the initial idea, and so he right. may have pitched it. But sometimes you, but eventually, yes. Even, eventually, yeah, you do. We also, we, Joe and I wrote a sketch that week. So I, I was in that, I had a real, that was a really fun uh, week because you get to be in a sketch, but then also the sketch that Joe and I wrote yeah. where it was uh, Tom uh, just as a, uh, you know, average Joe with, with a few couples at a carnival uh, playing like the football game where you're trying to throw a football and get it through the hole. Yeah. And he can't do it. He gets more and more <laughs> frustrated, more and more angry. <laughs> And it's just he's and he's great in it and and um yeah it was it and then so, I, but Brady got the joke when you were told him oh one hundred percent yeah okay, yeah good. yeah he got I mean yeah no he 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 absolutely did did yeah. you see Kelsey 
do SNL? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, no, no, guys, I heard he did great. The the American Girl doll yeah, yeah, sketch. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Yeah, Just yeah. look that up. <laughs> great. Because he went for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same oh, way yeah. you were talking about, you got to go for it, you got to get into it. He, he, yeah. Jason Sudeikis, he went for I it. I don't doubt a creep it. in an American Girl doll store yeah. with our kids. And, oh, I love it. No, he, I mean, he is so oh infectious. He has such a good time. He, I took uh, a bunch of uh, my friends, uh, you know, went back to, I hadn't been to Arrowhead in probably 35 years. Like when, since when was I was this? a kid, this was over Thanksgiving. Jason Sudeikis is yeah. still here. So you yeah. went back to Thanksgiving. I went for, back. Yeah, we were back in KC. Yeah. I was there with the kids, and yeah. and I had you know a couple of my friends, Billy and, and Terry, brought our kids. Mm -hmm. uh, got to go down onto the onto the field. You know, uh, you know Travis and Patrick, who who you know participated at in Big Slick and and Thunder Gong, these two charity events we do back home. Uh, they came over to say hi, and and yeah, Travis was just. Just game from jump. It was so nice to all the all the young fellows in the locker room, yeah. which could be a very you know frightening thing for for uh, you know an eight, nine, ten year old boy. Yes. You can change your perspective on a lot of things. Yes. Yeah. And Kelsey just made you know just was a human being. They all were. So you know, was Mahomes. So yeah, absolutely. All of them. No yeah. doubt about it. I mean, it. you know, you know, Coach Reed, his wife, every you know, the, all, the Hunts. They were all. Everybody was top notch. It made it made it made Otis and Daisy. Uh, look like absolute superstars to their young Kansas cousins, as we call them. I love it's it. like, when are they coming back in town? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So let's talk Big Slick a little bit here. This is year 10, 11 for you guys, I oh, think. No, it might be up? like 12 or 12? 13. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I've, had, I've unfortunately missed the last two. Because you've been be shooting 10 Yeah, we've been, yeah, it's overlapped. Right, and it is a... It's a wild weekend. Yeah. It is a lot of fun for those who attend. Uh, but the ultimate win is obviously for Children's Mercy Hospital yeah. in Kansas City for the kids. And I will never forget the first time that I went mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, Riggle, the first night, everybody's there. Lots of revelry this yep. just in. Yep. And then he'll just stand there and point to his watch and go, you guys all need to get some sleep because yep. we're going to the hospital in the morning. That's right. And that's the beautiful part about this is that everybody – goes to the hospital and meets these kids and the families and the families and the and the, and the, and the doctors and the nurses and the staff no it, it, it's literally a place where miracles happen yes and and they're at the forefront of of technology i mean uh, in in all aspects it, it covers you know uh, you know a five state area it's it's a truly remarkable place and 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 yeah that became a big a big thing for us because the first couple of years it was kind of like hey you can go to the hospital if you can and but people were getting after it and that's when we had like a whole poker a poker tournament. That's why it's called Big, Big Slick, Slick yeah. you know. But then, then we, you know, more money, more problems. As we got bigger, the, the gaming commission was like, "Hey, you can't do this anymore." I was like, "All right, fine, we'll make it bowling." <laughs> you know, and, I've and, been to and both exactly right. Yes, and and I appreciate you know the rules and all of that. That doesn't mean there's still some poker happening in the in the hotel rooms later <laughs> later in the evening. But but gosh dang man, we made sure everybody went to that hospital. It's like you got to go to that hospital and see what's what. No doubt, it, it, it changes. The, it changes the the level of fun you have. Like if you can, if you laughing, crying, sleeping. If you if you can do those as consistently as yes. anything, those are those are true medicines that are in all of us that we share with one another. If you if you have the opportunity and and going to a hospital visit, you get to do you know at least those first two. You know, laughing and crying. We, we, sometimes in the same in the same moment. And and the families, the things that they, they go through. And you see the siblings of these kids that. That were born into a situation, yeah. uh, the, uh, you know, unfortunate situation, but they don't know that they don't they don't know it. They only know that's their only reality. And you see those kids dealing with that, and the people around them who do know. And yeah, it, even before being a parent, it was one of the m most moving, you know, weekends of my life. And and it's a bummer to miss. I'm glad we could extend, you know, uh, some auction items to help that thing. Yeah, but again, slickkc.org. If I'm not mistaken, did you give away a cameo on? We gave on, away two. Yeah, did, yeah, and have, people stepped up. Yeah, they ha, have, they have no. No, because it happened later in the year. So, oh. so yeah, they they the, those cameos show up in. Is it ten? So, ten next so week coming up. Ten, yeah, ten and, and twelve. Yeah. So somebody who donated to Big Slick. Yeah. In KC. Yeah. Will appear on a Ted Lasso in episode in, ten in, in and in episode, episode twelve. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I can't wait. All yeah. right. Well, so uh, keep an eye out for all of that. I um, wonder if folks, I don't know if folks will be able to sniff them out. I mean, it's, it's, I'll, we'll and, and, try. I've and, been looking this whole season because I was there last oh, year. Oh, you're there. Okay, you great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was well, like, oh, when is this happening? Yeah. So I've been just trying to, okay, they don't look like a real actor. Okay, who's this? <laughs> I was just trying to. Guess. I love it. It's fantastic. Well, don't do that. Otherwise, you'd think it would be me. It was uh, me the whole time. No, hey, come, come on, on hey. now. In, in the two minutes I have left, yeah. the, the, the million dollar question yes. is this the end of Ted Lasso or what? I mean, I, I really. I, I mean, I've always said. I've always meant what I said, where it's like this was the story we wanted to tell, right. you know, and 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 I mean that would be evident when you like when episode twelve is is out and available, 
Um, so it feels a little silly to, to keep you know going back to it. But again, not anticipating or ever expecting or imagining people's reaction or response to it. Also, with the process of making it being such a joyful one and one that we really you know bust our, our buns at, at doing, and yet it still is very fulfilling and it's and it's not you know at least it doesn't feel toxic you know in, in, uh, to me that it's like okay. Maybe, maybe there, maybe there's more there, but it has to come from the stories and the characters, and we have to like satisfy these these ends here before really having that conversation. It's, it, it feels a little bit like you know talking about next season when you're in the playoffs. It's kind of like it's you know you gotta pas. finish. So is yeah. there going to be just a a lasso summit or something? It'll probably be the same everyone? way this whole thing started with me and Joe and and Brendan. You know, sitting in a sitting in a pool like you know making each other laugh and, and being like, you know, wh what do we think? And, and, and just sort of staying open to, to, you know, the, the universe of things, the business side of things is, is a whole other complication, Understood. but like, it has to come from the root of like the, 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 the where, where, where we'd want the story to go, where we'd want it to go further, how we'd want it to evolve the character right. evolution, you know, just, and we don't need it all fleshed out, but just mm -hmm. like a notion of, 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 of what, why, of, of a, a better why than just cause, because uh, folks want it. Well, I, I hear you Which on is that. a nice thing. Please keep doing it. And I know I'm looking at somebody knowing that this is a monster creative process and it's a lot, but it's awesome. Thanks. Man. And it's a beautiful thing. You know, and I know it's tough to sustain something over years and it's, 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 it's a process for you. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just my wife and I saying, oh, the new episode's on. Here we go. Sure. Yeah. So that I understand. Please keep doing it. Okay. I mean, it's so great. It's so much fun. The characters are amazing. And we all need the the good feelings, man. The good tidings I, I, in this day I and age. You. I think you so. No, no pressure. But, <laughs> no, 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 I mean, but in the same way that you're like the just because other people want it, I'm just telling you to your face. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, and, and I, I don't take it that lightly. You know, the the just because is, is it shouldn't be about the paycheck or 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 even the desire for it. The the, the there has to be uh, there's the cause and the cause. You know, let's see nice. if we, we let's see if we can find you know like overlap there, and, and we just haven't had the, the time and space to really get you know let the, let that idea marinate. You know, it's, well, I you know. think you just by the way that sounds like a line from season four. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, you never the cause know. and the cause. <laughs> well, write that, Chris. Write that down. <laughs> mail it to yourself, mail it and to then sue the pants off of Apple <laughs> and Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's that time. <laughs> it is, yeah. Jason Sudeikis, thanks for coming on, brother. Thanks for this having me, man. It's been a total blast. Again, uh, everybody, catch Ted Lasso on Apple TV+. Plus. You can watch that right here on Roku.